This is uh, Visio 2010 Network Diagram, Data Links, and Data Graphics Tutorial. And we'll be uh, working uh, today on Network Diagram and uh, adding data to it so that it can be uh, graphically displayed. So we're going to start here by um, bringing in a, some shapes. And this will just be our network, these are monitors, and these can be anything. I'm just going to bring in this item right here. And it's the only thing that I'm going to need. I will be looking at shape data. We're going to do a little work on this shape. And the first thing we want to do is. Um, Eliminate all the existing data fields. So I'm going to define shape data and just hit delete. Then the next thing we're going to do is um, I'm just going to put some text in here and we're going to format that text, make it uh, 8 point. And just expand that text field a bit. And for this will become clearer. Now that we have um, the shape we're going to uh, take the shape and make a few copies of it. Again, the control key. And um, now we're going to look at linking uh, some data in Excel. Uh, I have a spreadsheet, and I took a, put a column here. Uh, I'm just going to be equipment ID, EQID. And here I put uh, some serial numbers from some uh, new computers that I'm going to deploy. So you can see they're, they're sequential. Now I'm going to uh, add a column to this uh, for uh, operating system. And then I'm uh, looking at uh, deploying. Uh, these computers to um, different uh, personnel, but I'm going to um, link to a, an existing database that uh, lists uh, people uh, in the in the business where this is being deployed. So now we're in uh, Microsoft Access, and. And here I have a uh, database. I'm going to open up the single table that's in here. And uh, this is basically what this table looks like. Uh, I'm going to bring this table in. So now that we've uh, looked at that, I'm going to close this table. We're back to Excel. So uh, right now I'm going to link, get external data. Here I found my database. And, um, and here I have uh, imported that table right into my database. Now um, one thing I'd like to do is, uh, as I deploy these computers, um, I've got some special requirements uh, in the operating system. Uh, it so happens, just say that uh, human resources is dealing with some legacy software that just isn't quite ready for um, Windows 7. And so uh, what I'm going to do here is, under the uh, operating system column, I'm going to put in a formula. And um, I'm 
you know, the logical condition. We're going to say if this equals human resources. going to be XP and if not one seven sixty four. See, it gives us XP, that was in resources. I just click the fill handle, drag the formula down, and you can see that it automatically is giving me the uh, operating system according to that. Now, I could add other conditions to that as well if you we wanted to make some other variation. Not very useful when you're doing uh, five computers, when you're doing maybe 100 computers um, or more, this is very useful. Now, Last thing I'm going to do here before uh, using this data in uh, in uh, Visio program is I'm going to go to uh, formulas and mini manager and I'm going to do a new one. I'm going to call this uh, equipment ID. And I'm going to refer to this area right here. So this is a, a named range in the spreadsheet. And we'll be referring to that uh, later on when we get into um, Zia. So um, with that, I'm going to save this so with that we're going to jump into Visio and we are going to go to data and we're going to link data to shapes. Here we're going to go to the Excel workbook. And um, and it asks what um, range we want to use. And this was that range that we named, EQID. First row of data contains column headings, which it does. And we're going to bring in uh, all the columns. Uniquely identify with the equipment ID and we finish. Now uh, you can see that um, this gives us uh, the opportunity here to uh, look at these different um, computer numbers and we can actually uh, name our computers using this. So you go right here and select, and you go link sign over here, and right now you're seeing uh, the default labeling of these, which is uh, not too attractive. We'll get rid of that pretty soon. And uh, with that, I'm going to close that external data window. Now, if we look at any of these, you'll see we've got three data fields that we picked up. Now, uh, there's a few other things that I might want to do here. So I'm not only going to link to that spreadsheet, I'm also going to go to my access database. And And 
I'm going to bring in all the columns and finish. Now here um, we have a common field. Uh, we could drag these rows onto the page. Okay, what we did before, that'd be pretty crude. But uh, we have a common field of this ID, which we had dragged in and selected as part of uh, on our spreadsheet. So because of that, we, have, we can go to this automatically link. And um, we want to automatically link to uh, all the shapes on this page. And got a column ID and shape field ID. Okay, will be the thing that we link with. And uh, it looks pretty good. So now if we go and look at this, we'll see that we not only have our original data fields, but now we have all the other information for the employee who is linked to this computer. And having that, uh, we can do some other interesting things. One thing is that we will uh, label these shapes. We'll go to Insert and Field. And here we're going to put in a custom formula uh, for labeling. And for this, we will go, um, we're going to put the, uh, the computer name, uh, which will be the same as its uh, serial number. And um, you start by typing PROP period, and then it gives us a whole bunch of fields. And here we want the equipment ID. We'll double click that. And then, um, and we're just going to use a, a float a space. Put a space between here, another and uh, PROP period. Here we'll go to. Uh, I would like to put the name of the employee using this computer. And put um, and space again. And, and the PROP period. And put uh, last name. Now I'm going to fill and and uh, character. And here's the number 10, which will give us a line feed down to the next line. And the next line we're going to put uh, the building name, the office that this computer is in, and space, and PROP period. The room. And uh, now we selected all of these, so it should enter this for all of the, uh, all of them. And so that looks pretty good. Click OK. And as you can see, this has uh, put the uh, computer, the uh, user, uh, building name, and room. I kind of like them a little better with the text left justified and here we go kind of nicely labeled and um, at this point we uh, do have uh, one other thing we like to do and that's the use of uh, these data graphics so I'll go back to data and here we will uh, go to our data graphics so I'm going to create a new data graphic and it's a new item and our data field. Um, I think I'm going to go here with the operating system and display it with colors. And um, here's our, what it's giving us as a default uh, red for Windows 64, and I think uh, Windows 764 for me is going to be green. A default if there's nothing there. Uh, I'm just gonna make that gray. Uh, XP kind of a little bit of a problem. I'm gonna make that one red. So we could have other operating systems in here, give them other colors. But um, here we go. So 
coloring by value. Click OK. Now we're going to select these guys and go to data graphics and pick this one. And it gives us some colors, but what does this mean? Well, we're going to select a legend. And it tells us what this is. So there we have the use of uh, data graphics to highlight the uh, different computers. Now, uh, if there are any changes that are made uh, either in the uh, database, the access database, and you could have picked a SQL database as well, or any changes that are made on that spreadsheet, they'll be uh, reflected in here. If there's any changes on the spreadsheet, they will be reflected in here as soon as um, we do a refresh. We'd like to see any of these changes and how, um, how they're reflected. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to have to uh, go and close these spreadsheets. So we're going to uh, save this and then close it. And we'll be going to the um, actually our Visio program and say this. It. Now I'm just going to change this to grower. And now uh, we can change the database and we go to refresh and um, for the chicken refresh data, it gives us two sources. One is that spreadsheet, and the other one is personnel, which is the table that we just made the change in. So I'm going to choose uh, that particular table, and I'm going to hit refresh, and uh, bypass that security concern. And we are refreshed, and if we look down here, you'll see that the name has changed on that user. So this is a way that um, by just refreshing our drawing we can make sure that it's up to date which uh, as personnel changes take place that's a, uh, a useful feature. Now the other um, thing we can do is of course we can change that operating system in which case um, uh, that will will change uh, here. We can also change it locally, but we want to change it on the spreadsheet and then that would reconfigure this. Uh, we could um, color these by department or anything else that's uh, in that database. So that would be uh, basically the use of the data graphics and the network diagram. And for further information, go to uh, drinfrastructure.com.